Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Be Cured Salmon Gravelox. That's right, if people knew exactly how easy it was to cure your own salmon at home, they still would buy it at the store. Which is sort of a shame, as anyone who's actually made this will tell you. Since while it does take a couple days, it is an extremely simple process, and the results are generally just as delicious and way more beautiful than anything you're going to get at the store. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we're going to put together our curing mixture, which sounds way more complicated than it is. Since all we need to do is mix equal parts of kosher salt and white granulated sugar, and maybe just maybe a little shake of cayenne. And believe it or not, that's it. We will simply stir that together, and that's now ready to use to magically convert our fresh salmon into cured salmon. So let's set that aside, and we'll move on to the star of the show, one piece of fresh, boneless, skin-on salmon. And as long as your piece starts at the tail end, it could be as big as you want, right up to and including the entire side of salmon. And as you can probably see, I'm doing a pretty small piece here. I think this was just around a half a pound, which is probably the minimum size piece you want to do. And then what we'll do once we have everything together is line some kind of dish or pan with some cheesecloth. Just a couple layers is fine. And then once that's placed in, we'll go ahead and sprinkle in roughly one third of our salt sugar mixture. And by the way, if you don't have cheesecloth, a clean kitchen towel will work beautifully. And yes, that crease going down the middle is annoying me too. But don't worry, that's not going to cause any adverse effects. And then what we'll do is place our salmon skin side down. Although you should probably use your hands, since I just totally crushed that with my tongs, and now it looks like it has a bite mark. But anyway, we'll place our salmon in, and then we'll go ahead and drop a beat from the top of the frame, so I can show you how I just peeled off the bottom half. And that's going to allow for us to grate this beet over the salmon without getting our fingers all red. At least that was the plan, but it didn't work and my fingers still got all red. But it's still a good idea because if you peeled it all, it would be too slippery and much harder to grate. And what we're trying to do here is grate over enough so when we spread it out, we have a layer about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. So no real measurements here, just sort of grate it until you have enough. And then once we think we have enough on, we'll take a fork and sort of spread it around. And I should mention, we're obviously doing beets here. But traditional Gravlax uses dill for this step, which really is lovely. And you could certainly include some here. But I didn't because I always do it that way and I wanted to try something different. And then what we'll do once our beet has been grated and spread out evenly is go ahead and apply the rest of our salt and sugar mixture to the top. And I was just about to say evenly, but because one side is thicker than the other, we can go a little heavier on that side. And then what we'll do once that's been applied is go ahead and fold our cheesecloth over. And we'll sort of wrap that up to hold everything together, at which point we'll add a piece of plastic over the top. And then, very important before this goes in the fridge, we have to weight it down somehow, which I'm going to do very effectively with a foil wrap brick. And while this really works out nicely, anything kind of flat and heavy will work, as long as the weight is relatively evenly distributed. And I'll try to give you a little extra info about that on the blog. And then what we'll do once that's weighted is transfer it into the fridge for anywhere between one day and three days depending mostly on the size and thickness of the salmon. And since I did use a relatively small piece, mine was done in a day and a half. And when I pulled it out, it looked a little something like this. And what's happened here is that sugar and salt has drawn out a lot of liquid from that fish. And by drawing out that liquid, not only have we preserved this, at least temporarily, but you'll notice the texture has gotten much, much firmer. All right, if yours is still mushy and feels like fresh fish, it needed to cure longer. But mine was feeling and looking just about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it from that dish. And I'll place that on a paper towel line plate. So that I can perform one optional, but I think important step. And that would be to scrape off our grated beet with the back of a knife. I mean, I guess you could slice this as is. But personally, I don't think it will look as good. So that's your call. I mean, you are after all the hairy chapin of beet scraping. So you decide, but I do recommend it. It really isn't that much more difficult than cradling a cat. But anyway, we'll go ahead and clean that up if we so choose. At which point, finally, this is ready to not eat. I mean, you could slice it and eat it, but I'm not going to. What I like to do is wrap this up and pop it in the fridge for one more day to, I guess, age a little bit. It just seems like it's a better texture the next day. And roughly 18 hours later, it looked like this, which I think is just absolutely stunning. And then what we'll do using a very sharp, relatively thin knife is go ahead and start slicing this up at roughly a 45 degree angle. And one tip here, make sure you save all your scraps and trimmings, since those can be chopped up, stirred into cream cheese, and they make for a great, great spread. 
But anyway, forget about the scraps for now. I'm going to go ahead and taste one of these amazingly beautiful slices. And as you can hopefully see from this close-up, the salmon has taken on sort of a plasticky, translucent appearance. Which along with the firmness is how you can tell this was properly cured. So the texture of this was absolutely perfect. And the taste? Equally amazing. Alright, if you've never had Gravlox before, imagine the best smoked salmon you've ever had without the smokiness. Alright, a little bit sweet, a little bit salty, with a beautiful buttery rich finish. So I was very happy with these results, and proceeded to slice up the rest. And speaking of slicing, we always want to slice away from the tail, at like I said about a 45 degree angle. And because salmon skin is so tough and leathery, when we slice down and the blade hits it, if you kind of turn the knife, that will let us finish the cut without going through the skin. Although as you can see, I just went through the skin, and there's a hole there. But my point is still valid. Simply slice down, gliding the knife back and forth until you hit that skin, and then stop pressing so hard. And simply turn the knife and complete your cut. And you know what? Not every piece is going to be perfect, like that one. But that's okay, our bagel won't care. And if we happen to see a little bit left on the skin, go ahead and trim that off. And add that to your little ramekin of scraps. So like I said, you can make a little spread later. And that's it, we'll go ahead and finish slicing that up to create an incredibly impressive looking platter for your next fancy brunch. I'm not saying this is gonna be the best Gravlox you've ever had in your life, but I am saying it's probably gonna be one of the most beautiful. And as impressive as that stuff looked on a platter, it's even more so piled up on a toasted bagel with cream cheese, garnished with a few capers. And while I have been known to pay up to $25 a pound for something very similar to this at the deli, this really was every bit as good. And by the way, if you miss the dill flavor, just chop up some fresh and put it on the top. Problem solved. But anyway, that's it. How to make your own beet cured salmon gravlax. And I'm not completely delusional, just partly. So I do realize most people won't have the patience for this. But you know what? We're not most people. Never have been, never will be. So for folks like us to wait a couple days for something this extraordinary is no big thing. Plus, you know that foodie friend of yours that is never impressed by anything? This will impress them. All right, they won't admit it, but it will impress them. So for those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.